This is a lecture about Model Rule 3.7, which uh, relates to lawyers serving as witnesses um, at a trial where they're also trying to be one of the lawyers or advocates in the case. Um, by the way, this is a shorter rule with less provisions, and I'm hoping it'll be uh, a shorter video. Uh, but we do need to cover it, and it is tested sometimes on the MPRE. It, it's a pretty straightforward rule. It's not one of the really complicated ones, uh, which is good news, and I think it should be easy to remember. A lawyer shall not act as an advocate at a trial in which a lawyer is likely to be a witness unless, and then we have three unlesses or exceptions. By the way, stop for a second. I want my students to remember that we had something like this um, under 3.8, Two, we, uh, right, and, and under th uh, three point, uh, I'm sorry, 3.8, uh, 1.7 1 and 1.8 have conflict of interest rules about how it could be a conflict of interest for the lawyer um, to try to be a witness at a trial where the lawyer is also um, being an advocate. And then we have a standalone rule about it right here at um, 3.7 in our litigation rules. So, if the testimony relates to an uncontested issue, that's an exception. So you can be the lawyer, the advocate in a case for one party, even if you're going to have to take the stand um, very briefly to, uh, let's say, authenticate a document and nobody has an objection and it's not a, the authentication, the authenticity of the document, let's say, is not in question. By the way, that's the most common um, situation where you as a lawyer might briefly take the stand is to um, authenticate a document. Two, uh, the testimony relates to the nature and value of legal services rendered in the case. Or three, uh, disqualification of the lawyer would work uh, substantial hardship on the client. And so two, you keep, keep in mind if we're um, either, this could be one of two cases, um, you're suing a client for unpaid fees or the client is somehow suing you saying they shouldn't have to pay you because you committed malpractice or were such a terrible lawyer or this could be a case where you, the prevailing party can seek attorney's fees from the um, losing party, either in some sorts of civil actions, sometimes there's statutory attorney's fees um, in civil rights cases and so forth. So, and what we do is after the trial is over in those cases is we have a separate hearing about the lawyer's fees. We're not just gonna take the lawyer's word for it about, what, about their bills, they're going to come in and they're going to have to submit their timesheets and be subject to some cross-examination and scrutiny from the other side. And sometimes this can be a very protracted um, process. If the litigation has gone on for years, remember the attorney's fees could run into millions or tens of millions of dollars. Um, if it's a simple case, it could just be a few thousand dollars uh, that we're talking about. Um, and uh, But obviously, you're going to have to take the stand. I worked at <laughs> Legal Aid. Um, after law school, and we didn't even charge our clients, and I had to take the stand and, and testify about the time I worked on a case at one point, um, because there was a, um, a, a procedural, uh, the other side had, had done a maneuver that uh, in the litigation, and was not the prevailing party that allowed um, our client to ask for attorney's fees, um, uh, basically because of what the other side had done in the case, and, and we got attorney's fees even though I my client, even though I was a free lawyer, as a legal aid lawyer. And so um, you have to take the stand. You have to explain um, what you were doing during your time. Oh, I was doing research or, oh, I was in court that day and so forth. Okay. The, the substantial hardship one is really for the extenuating circumstance where maybe an unforeseen issue has come up um, during trial or on the eve of trial where the only person who can ask or answer a question is one of the party's lawyers. Like it's something about, you know, because the lawyer was the only other person in the room um, who could uh, verify the, the testimony or attest to something. And, um, and it's a little too late or there's too many other people with conflicts of interest, but it would really be difficult to replace the lawyer, to, to just switch out the lawyer and say, okay, you're a witness, your client has to get somebody else. Um, and so if it's really infeasible to have you withdraw from the representation and switch you out with another lawyer, that's going to be a very, very rare circumstance. Um, then uh, we might let you testify. B, a lawyer may act as an advocate in a trial in which another lawyer in the lawyer's firm is likely to be called as a witness unless precluded from doing so by 1.7 or 1.9. And those are conflicts of interest rules um, where it could be something like you don't want to be a witness in a, in a case 
against a lawyer where you're going to have to say unfavorable stuff about your boss, let's say. Um, so that could, buy, that could be a material limitation under 1.7. Um, but generally, keep in mind that if you're working on a case and it turns out that you are actually going to have to take the stand and explain something as part of the case, another lawyer from your office can take over the case. And please note that this is different than a lot of our conflicts of interest rules where we would disqualify the whole firm or our talking to the media rule, the, the last rule we did 3.6, where you're not allowed to talk to the media and nobody in your firm is allowed to talk to the media about certain things when there's a case pending. Um, but with the witness case, if we can just switch out lawyers from the firm. And so if you are going to have to testify at a case, get another lawyer from your firm, or if you work for a government agency, a DA's office, public defender, the DOJ, another lawyer from your office, it's just going to handle the trial because you're going to be testifying as a, a witness. What we don't want is you taking the stand and being the person who's cross-examining witnesses and doing the, the courtroom advocacy. Okay, let's go back. We're almost done here. I have a, a quick um, point, and this is derived from uh, some case law and ethics opinions about this, about affidavits. So uh, three points to remember before we move on from 3.7. First, the advocate witness rule applies to a lawyer's testimony in the form of a written affidavit. And so you can't get around this rule just by submitting what you were gonna say as an affidavit instead and having it be accepted as, av as evidence that that's the equivalent of you taking the stand. And so if you're gonna submit an affidavit that's gonna be relevant and material testimony and it's a contested issue, you still can't be the lawyer in the case. Number two, not all affidavits filed by a lawyer implicate this rule. And three, whether 3.7 is implicated depends on the affidavit's content. So here, it, I'm making this video in Texas. In Texas, for certain types of civil um, uh, pleadings, uh, the lawyer attaches a sort of a boilerplate affidavit um, to pleadings when they're filed, attesting to the veracity of the statements and, and, the, and the good faith and making the claims and stuff like that. And so this is like standard verbiage that's just tacked on to pleadings when you file it at the end. That's the lawyer's sort of certification or attestation. And that is in theory an affidavit. And that is not what we're talking about because that's not one of the contested issues in the case or um, uh, material evidence in the case. Um, there's, and then, so that's an easy one. This, that does not implicate this rule. And then we have some things that are a little bit in the middle um, uh, where it could be a, you will have to look at the rules of your per, uh, jurisdiction about whether this type of affidavit from the lawyer um, uh, would count. And so, for example, an affidavit about your uh, verifying your attorney's fees in the case or something like that. Look at the rules of your local jurisdiction. Okay, that concludes our um, lecture about rules.